First, I'd like to say thank you to everyone for the prayers for Father Keller. As many of you know, Father Keller's been in the hospital for close to two weeks. Uh, he contracted the uh, coronavirus and eventually it got pretty bad, so we had to put him in the hospital. But uh, little by little, poco a poco, he's getting, he's getting better. And so thank you for your prayers. And please continue to pray for him and for his healing, as well as we want to pray for anyone who's, who has the virus, uh, that they can remain asymptomatic, or if they, be, they get sick, that they can soon heal. And, um, you know, thank you on behalf of myself, Father Brown, uh, Deacon Randy, uh, the clerics of the, of the cathedral, we had to go into quarantine because of that as well. So thank you for your patience. We were not able to have the liturgies, public liturgies. Uh, we had to celebrate them in private. And uh, so know that we continue to, to offer uh, prayers for you. And this 11 o'clock Sunday Mass, the intention of this 11 o'clock Sunday Mass, generally because I take it, is always the Mass with the intention for the people, for the parishioners. So know that we continued to keep you in our prayers, and please continue to keep our, us, us in your prayer, but especially, especially uh, Father Keller. So the icon, I would say that the church offers to us, the image that the church offers to us on the second Sunday of Advent, and he really is a central theme throughout the Advent season, is St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist, who we know, to be the last of the Old Testament prophets, and we might even say he was the first of the New Testament prophets. A dividing line is the Annunciation, right? The announcement of our Lord and the birth of our Lord. So that's the dividing line there. So the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. He's the last of the new old, the first of the new. And we reflect upon what a, a prophet is. A prophet really at the heart of, his, of who he is, his identity, is that he is a mouthpiece of God. He speaks for and he speaks on behalf of God and he speaks to the people. Sometimes the word he speaks can be a very challenging word. We think about the prophet Elijah, the prophet Jeremiah, really spoke challenging words to the people. And sometimes, especially among the leadership, they didn't like that. And so they could have pushed back a bit. They push back from these, these great prophets because they weren't ready to receive the good news, even if it was difficult good news. Or sometimes we have the prophet who speaks a word of hope, and that's what we hear today from the prophet Isaiah. And that is all the wonderful things that the Lord will do, how he'll level the mountains, he'll make straight the paths, he'll fill in the valleys. In other words, he will make things much easier on us. He'll lift the burden that is upon us. And ultimately, we know that burden to be the burden of sin and death. And so, when Isaiah is speaking of this, he's pointing to a reality much, much greater uh, to come. And we know that reality to be Jesus Christ. We know him to be the Messiah. And so, that's a word of hope that the prophet speaks. And so, we look at the life of St. John the Baptist, and he speaks both words. Right? He calls the people to repentance. In other words, he calls them to turn away from their sinful ways and return back to God. And praise God, we hear in the gospel that many people were coming out to them and they were experiencing this, this um, baptism of repentance for their sins, much different than the baptism that we have all received, which he points toward already, saying what, this is what the Lord will do for you. And so he calls them, gives them a difficult word, Thank God many people were, were responding to it. But he also says to them, he gives them a word of hope. And the word of hope that he gives is when he points toward Jesus Christ, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Words that we hear every time we celebrate the sacrifice of the Mass. And so John the Baptist gives challenging words, but John the Baptist also gives words of hope. And that's what a prophet does, because he speaks on behalf of God, calls the people back to a right relationship with God, and also reminds them how much it is that God loves him. So he spoke that prophetic word. At the end of the gospel passage, it speaks about the baptism that we receive. And the baptism we receive takes away the stain of original sin, makes us new creations in, in Christ, and allows us to call God our Father in the midst of the worshiping community. 
And following the baptism, what happens is we are anointed. We're anointed three things, and we share in them by virtue of our baptism. We share in them with Jesus Christ. We are anointed priest, prophet, and king. So we are all anointed prophets. And if we are anointed prophets, it means that we are anointed to be the mouthpiece of God in order to speak on his behalf. And we might think, well, boy, that's quite the, ta the, the daunting task to be able to do that. But we've been empowered with the teachings of the church, sacred scripture, right? Sacred scripture and tradition. So we've been empowered with the teachings of the church. And so to know the teachings as best of our, to our ability and to be able to share those with people is a way in which we can speak that prophetic word. Sometimes people will receive that truth and they'll receive it well. Sometimes we can be a little reluctant to preach that truth. For example, think of the prophet Jonah, when he was told to go to the people in Nineveh and call them to repentance, he was fearful, He didn't have a courageous heart, and he shied away from that. And as a matter of fact, he tried to run away from that. But as we know the story of Jonah, eventually he had to, he had to fulfill the mission that he was given, to, uh, given by God. And so he was a reluctant prophet. So he was fearful at first, but eventually he had a courageous heart. And what did he do? He preached the good news to the people of Nineveh. What did they do? They repented. They repented and turned away from their sins. You see that example in the, prof in the prophet of St. John the Baptist, but we can see that in ourselves as well. Perhaps there's a hard saying that we have to share with somebody. Perhaps it's going to be maybe a family member, a friend, co-worker, someone. Perhaps we are that reluctant prophet. And perhaps we're fearful. But what do we do? We pray for a courageous heart. And we only share it if we're sharing that prophetic word, we're sharing it out of love. If we don't share it out of love, we completely lose the ability to speak. Remember, Paul says, if I don't speak out of love, I'm a noisy gong, clanging cymbal. Nobody's going to receive that prophetic word. But if I'm truly desiring the good of another person, and I'm sharing that prophetic word with them, and I'm doing it out of love, then we can rest assured that we're doing the will of the Lord. And what is a prophet? A prophet is someone who speaks on behalf of God. A prophet is someone who speaks that prophetic word. And we are all baptized and anointed, priest, prophet, and king. And so John the Baptist is this beautiful icon that the church holds up for us today. And I use that term icon on a purpose. If we've ever seen an icon. They say with an icon, it is a window into heaven. So if it's an icon of our Lord or an icon of our lady, and in this case it would be an icon of St. John the Baptist. Father Mitchell has a beautiful, beautiful icon of St. John the Baptist. And they say when you look into the icon, you're gazing into heaven. And that would make perfect sense to us because where are the saints? Where is our Lord? Where is our Lady? They're in heaven. And so as we gaze into the icon and we see the particular saint, again in this case, St. John the Baptist, we can trust that that saint, if we ask that saint to pray for us we can pray we can trust that that saint is praying for us on our behalf and we can ask that saint help us to be like you and in this case help, help us to be like saint john the baptist help us to be a prophet in our modern times in a world that needs to hear the good news now more so than ever help us to have a courageous heart just as you were and help us to always speak to people family friends co-workers, help us to speak to people always out of love. So we ask for St. John the Baptist who inspires us today. We ask him to intercede on behalf of all of us that we might live up to the calling that we have all received by virtue of our baptism as prophets, mouthpieces of God speaking on behalf of the Lord.